This video is intended for uh, general education teachers who serve deaf and hard of hearing students. This is how to accommodate those deaf and hard of hearing students in the classroom. We're going to talk about classroom setup, equipment use, classroom personnel, accommodations in the IEP, language and literacy, and speech and listening abilities for deaf and hard of hearing students, checking for understanding, deaf culture etiquette, sign language, and last, myths about deafness. First is classroom setup. It's really important for the deaf student to be near the teacher, the interpreter, and the board. The student needs to be able to see all, all three clearly, to be able to see and hear clearly. Um, also, distractions need to be minimized. So for noise and light that might be distracting for the student. So for example, um, if the doors open and people are passing by, the student might be distracted watching people in the hall. So you can either close the door or move the student to face a different direction or move to a different place in the classroom. Sometimes bright lights and windows can be distracting. So if the interpreter or the teacher is between the student and the window, that can cause a shadow on the, hand, the, the hands and the face of the interpreter and the teacher, causing more difficulty for the student's understanding. Sometimes for noise and echo, this is caused by hard flooring or um, uh, hard walls. So you can add a rug or curtains on the windows, anything to help reduce the noise. Also fans um, from a video projector or a refrigerator or um, the AC sometimes, all of those machines can cause noise that can distract the deaf or hard of hearing student. So anything you can do to move the student away from those sources of noise will help the student tremendously. Equipment use. Sometimes as a hearing general education teacher, you'll need to check their hearing aids and cochlear implants. It should happen every day to make sure that the student is able to hear all the speech frequency noises. So there are six sounds to test for, and that test is called the Ling-6 sound test. So you can use either the sounds themselves, the mm, mm, shh, sh, e, and ah, or you can use words that contain those sounds. So you'll repeat, you'll say those words and the student should be able to repeat them back if their equipment is working properly. Another way you can do it is if you are across the room and you use the microphone and say the student's name. So for example, Bob, can you hear me? The student should be able to reply and say, yes, I can hear you or something similar. If you need more instruction to know how to do the Ling 6 sound test, there's a link at the bottom of this page, and I'll also put it in the description for this video. Another consideration for equipment is the use of the FMDM microphone. First, you'll need to make sure that it's actually turned on and not uh, muted or silent. You'll also need to pass the microphone to each student who is speaking during group discussions. That will help the deaf or hard hearing student follow the conversation better. It sometimes takes longer, but it's worth it for that deaf and hard hearing student to be involved. Also, that FMDM microphone has a cord that can connect to your computer's speakers to allow the student to hear a video that's played on your computer. Next, we'll talk about classroom personnel. The first one is the interpreter. They are a really important part of your classroom and allow that 
deaf and hard of hearing student to be involved. They are a professional themselves and they have to follow a professional code of conduct. Their job is just to facilitate communication. Their job is not to critique, critique you as the, the teacher. They're not supposed to offer uh, educational or academic input or opinions. Their job is to help the deaf student communicate with you and they're also supposed to help you understand their deaf student's needs as it comes along. Um, when you're speaking to the deaf or hard of hearing student, speak directly to the student and look at the student. Do not look or speak to the interpreter. Um, also, if you're lecturing or speaking and you ask the deaf student a question, allow a lag time. That interpreter is waiting for your sentences to finish to think about how to sign it appropriately for the deaf and hard of hearing student. And that means that they're usually one or two sentences behind your speech. So allow time for the interpreter to finish signing and the student to think and answer. Another person in the classroom might be uh, another student. Um, they're, if they're willing to take notes for themselves and then copy and give a an, uh, copy to the deaf student, that's one way for um, notes to be provided to the deaf student. Another way is for a deaf or hard of hearing teacher to be in the cla class also. Um, normally they sit near the student to take notes and then offer help um, with in-class in assignments as needed. Um, another person in the classroom might be a co-teacher. Their job is to assist all students, but when it's not their time for direct teaching, they can point to visuals or information to help the deaf or hard of hearing student follow the main instruction. Accommodations are legally required to be provided through the ARD uh, meeting contract. They are um, necessary for that particular student to be successful in the classroom. So there are several ways that deaf and hard of hearing students um, or several accommodations that they will use. Examples would include um, the preferential seating, like I said before, um, note-taking, um, an interpreter, a microphone, extra time to complete assignments, small group testing, um, reading support for comprehension, um, ex there's an extra time for um, homework, uh, also captions. One thing that I would really recommend before you show a new video with the captions make sure that the captions are accurate so one way that you can do this is to turn off the sound on the video and only read the captions then you will have an idea of what that deaf or hard of hearing student will understand from the video and if you feel that the captions are okay enough that the information provided will be enough for the deaf or hard of hearing student to complete an assignment, great. If not, then might need to search for a different video. Other accommodations include visual supports. Visual supports are really important to help the deaf or hard of hearing student completely understand what they're supposed to be doing in class. Examples include um, pictures that match vocabulary. Also, um, spatial relationships that are acted out in a physical manner. So for example, this picture shows um, chemical bonds with students holding each other's arms. So that's a good physical way to help the student understand visually what's happening. Um, written directions. So really important so that that's, 
student doesn't feel the need to say, tell me again, what am I supposed to do? They can look and read the directions on the board or on their paper, wherever, so that they can follow along in class. Also, uh, proper lighting. And less, it's less distracting if the student is away from a window with a bright light that um, blocks the view of the interpreter or the teacher, and also um, away from the door to lessen, to lessen distractions, like I said earlier. Many deaf and hard of hearing students have language and literacy problems. One of the main problems that we see often is the multiple grade levels below um, enrolled grade level. So their reading, writing, and language level levels are really, really low. That's caused by um, parents who don't uh, sign fluently at home or at all. It might also be caused by another disability. Um, another problem that's related with their lower reading and writing levels is their uh, ability to acquire new vocabulary, especially um, abstract concepts. And um, they require lots of pre-teaching, direct pre-teaching to be able to understand those concepts. They also need multiple repetitions of teaching to be able to apply it to their own experiences in life and their background knowledge. That helps them to remember everything better. And it's also best to chunk information into small groups to help them have time to retain it. Deaf and hard of hearing students have a variety of speech and listening abilities. So it's really important to know and that particular student and their capabilities related to speech and hearing. Some students have a very good speech ability, even if they have a profound loss. Um, others have a very understandable speech uh, pattern. So one example is uh, the former Miss America Heather Whitestone. She has a profound hearing loss, but she has excellent speech. And that usually requires many, many years and many, many hours of speech therapy practice. Hard of hearing students usually ha have some understandable speech, it, but again, that also depends on their level of hearing loss. And many students still attend speech therapy services and may have an approximation of the speech sounds. Deaf and hard of hearing students need um, to, to have their understanding of concepts checked just as a hearing student would. So a way that you can know if they understand what question you've asked is to ask them a yes or no question or um, an open-ended response type of question. Uh, deaf and hard of hearing students tend to have what we call the deaf nod. It's the head, uh-huh, say that says I understand but really inside they're really confused and don't understand so please do not accept the deaf nod ask yes no questions and open-ended questions to make sure that that deaf or hard of hearing student understands completely and also if you're trying to question them just you use your normal voice. You don't need to be louder or um, shout for any reason. Just talk as you uh, would a normal hearing student. As a hearing general education teacher, you'll also need to know about uh, deaf culture elements, things that are typical for deaf and hard of hearing people. One is please 
talk directly to the student, not uh, to the interpreter. You can pretend that the interpreter is not there. Um, so look and speak directly to the deaf or hard of hearing student. If you want to get their attention, you can wave in their field of vision. Um, also, you can call their name or tap them on the shoulder. For small groups, it's really difficult for a deaf or hard of hearing student to follow conversation with multiple people. Um, it's also very difficult for an interpreter to follow a conversation in that way. So if each person in the group takes turns and it's made aware of who is speaking at, at each time, that will help the deaf and hard of hearing student and the interpreter follow the conversation. Um, and it also helps if their background noise is minimized to help the deaf or hard of hearing student to focus on the conversation. Things that you need to know about sign language is that there are several different sign languages as well as uh, sign communication systems. And they are not the same thing. Also know that during interpreting, that the interpreter is a little bit behind your speech. Um, so please allow a lag or a wait time between the interpreter finishing signing and the student responding. Also, if you know a little bit of sign language or the alphabet, please do not tell the deaf or hard of hearing student that you know sign language. You can tell them, I know how to spell my name. Great, but it's different than knowing a full language.